Hello, everyone. This is Jared Kress, a pastor of Calvary Hills Baptist Church, and you are here for Off Scripts with Pastor Jared, episode number five. We're building quite the library here, moving right along. One of these days, we'll look back and say, wow, episode 100. But until that day, we move on with number five. And uh, I've got something that's a bit of a different topic for us today. I know I've just been mainly ranting about things that upset me lately, and uh, I wanted to do something different, something that was a bit outside the box. So we're going real outside the box today with this one. And the topic is essentially this. What if UFOs are actually real? And what if there are alien life forms in them that come visit us? Now, in case you think I'm a conspiracy theorist with a tinfoil hat on my head right now, you should know uh, that I do get my tinfoil uh, from H-E-B. No, but I was going to say that the reason that this is happening is uh, there's a report that's going to be coming out and it's probably going to get some decent press when it does. Uh, so maybe, you know, in December of 2020, there was in one of the bills that passed Congress, uh, there was a provision in one of those bills. And you can look this up that the Pentagon must release an official report on UFOs within six months. So six months from December is June. So sometime in the month of June, there's going to be released from the Pentagon a report on UFOs, everything they had. Now, if you've been watching the news, uh, I know that Tucker Carlson has been following this story and there's some things on YouTube, but uh, there's been some releases from the Navy from uh, official Pentagon video that's been released that has uh, some clips that are some things that just we're not quite sure what they are. That's what makes them a UFO. So um, I thought it would be good not knowing what's going to come out. I thought it would be good to go ahead and just set some parameters of how to think through whatever comes out. So some crazy scenarios and some nothing scenarios. And how should Christians be thinking? What should our, our worldview kind of be prepared for in the event that UFOs are uh, maybe more than what we expect this report to be? Uh, in the end, it could be absolutely nothing and a disappointment. And, you know, it was, you know, some guy with a hot air balloon or something, you know. But what if it's more than that? Well, we should be maybe thinking about that in advance, because this topic tends to shake people, especially Christians. It can be shaky to the faith. If you've never considered this before, and then all of a sudden it was real, I think a lot of people would be really concerned that this is a, a reality. Um, and so I want to think through a few things with you. So I like to think biblically from the beginning. What are some biblical facts that we can affirm when we're thinking about UFOs and aliens and life on other planets and uh, other galaxies far away and things like that. So let's just start from the very beginning. Genesis one, one says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, and just so you know, the Hebrew understanding of heavens is really outer space. It's really way out there. So it's all of that stuff. God created everything. And we would agree, Christians ag would agree, everything we see, God created. So uh, if you know me, you know I'm not an evolutionist. You know I'm not a theistic evolutionist. So I do believe that God ex nihilo, that's Latin for out of nothing, uh, simply by his, uh, his word, the word of his power, created all things that we see. Planets, solar systems, galaxies, stars, everything infinitely as far as you can go light years upon light years god made everything uh, so i i don't hold to the big bang i do believe god made everything that's there so uh, the bible affirms that in the beginning god created so there was a time when there was nothing and then there was a time when in the mind of god for his purposes and his decrees said it's go time let's make everything boom. And there it was. He said, let there be light. And there was light. He said, let there be uh, fish and cattle and vegetation and man. That's how God works. So he brought things into existence. So we affirm that everything that exists, exists because God made it. Now, additionally, 
uh, John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. So that's talking about Jesus being an active agent involved in creation. Jesus was an active participant in all things created because Jesus himself was also eternal with God. So uh, there are no things made accidentally or outside the providential care and creative hand of God or of Christ. That's affirmed in Colossians 1, 15, where it says that he, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authority, all things were created through him and for him. So if anything that was made out there, we at least got to say, biblically speaking, that it was created through him and for him. And that's, that's interesting to think about. Now, in case you're like, Hey, give me some old Testament. All right. In Nehemiah nine, six, I love this verse. They said, you are the Lord, you alone. You have made the heaven, the heaven of heavens with all their hosts and the earth with all that is on it and the seas and all that is in them. You preserve all of them and the host of heaven worships you. Now, when we hear the, that phrase host of heaven, uh, the Bible understanding of that is not aliens. Uh, it is the, it is the angels. It is the, uh, the spiritual realm of, of the angels of heaven. So that is what the host of heaven is though. They are created and they exist. Now this is an important time to affirm that, uh, we, we affirm the reality of a spiritual universe. Um, there are, we affirm the reality of angels and demons, and it is very possible that people actually not possible. It, we know that Hebrew says that people have entertained angels uh, unaware to them. We have encountered angels in our lives. Angels are in the Bible. They are, are real. So we have to think through that reality as well, that there, there is a spiritual component to the universe. And sometimes we might be seeing things of which we don't know what we're looking at. And it's very possible that we've, we've seen spiritual realities in our life, angels, demons, uh, things, things that we don't necessarily know how to categorize when we see them. So let's, that's our spiritual, that's our, our, our Bible framework. So we've started with that. Everything that exists, exists by and for and through Christ. It's all for God. It's all through him. It's all by him. So this idea that something out there is unknown, we, all we really are saying that it's unknown to us. Uh, there's nothing unknown to God. Nothing would surprise him. He is the sovereign king of the universe. There is, there is no life out in the, in the universe that would surprise or shock God. Okay. And if it does exist out there, uh, he made it. It's there because he put it there. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind as well. So what is a UFO? Uh, I, I looked up what, what a UFO is and what the options are. Well, basically unidentified flying object is the simple term. It's that's all it is an unidentified flying object. And if you've seen these videos that have been making the rounds on the internet, they're, they're strange items. Some of them are triangular shaped. Uh, the, some of them are round. They look like they, can kind of pop in and out of water. They're going from air to underwater to out of the water again, really quickly. They change directions in the air. Um, unlike anything that we see in, in our planes and in our, uh, shuttles and, uh, our bombers, anything like that. So it, these are some strange videos and, and there may even be disturbing to you to see them, uh, because it just doesn't look like any flying, technology that we have. Now that's what we've seen so far leaked is that it mainly looks like flying aircraft, uh, not anything that's like a creature, you know, or, or an alien itself, but it's just been a unidentified, strictly definition of UFO is unidentified flying object. It just means, and it doesn't mean it's alien. That just literally means we don't know what it is. It's unidentified. We don't, we can't account for it. So, um, a couple of options of what a UFO could be. Well, it could be our own government running 
tests with aircraft beyond what we know exists. All right, they could be doing things that we don't know about. The troubling part with that is that the Pentagon is the one releasing this report. So they should know what they're doing, but it's always possible that, that there are secrets being kept from one another in our own country. So it's possible that we've got things that we don't, uh, that you don't know exist and I don't know exist, some, some craft beyond what we know that are being tested out there, and it's got caught on camera. It's possible that there's civilian drones, projects, aircrafts that are made by, you know, just people that are being filmed. It's possible that some film that has been seen has been modified, that it's not film in good faith, that we're being told that it's an accurate presentation of the film, but that film was made it into Photoshop or, or Adobe or some other project that uh, has been doctored up to be something else. And there's maybe some reason behind that. It's possible that the film is reality, but that it's misunderstood, that we think we're looking at an alien aircraft, but really we're looking at uh, something that taken in, in a different light um, or, you know, something that's further away with perspective. It's we're misunderstanding what we're seeing and that it's sort of innocent. It's not what we think it is. It's possible that it's foreign intelligence. So, you know, we don't know what other countries are doing. Now, we would like to think that we're the baddest dude on the block, that we have the most advanced aircraft. And so this would be uh, basically if we found out that other countries had this technology that's beyond our technology, that would be bad for that reason, that we realized that they were ahead of us and that they have aircraft that confounds our guys, uh, our military. So that would not be good news either. That would actually be really bad news. So we hope that's not the case also. Um, and then I guess the last option would be that it is extraterrestrial intelligent life. So if none of those things I just listed turn out to be true, it is possible that it is an extraterrestrial intelligent life uh, that is uh, scouting us out or coming to visit us from other places. Now, what if that's true? All right. Now, in case you think, man, this preacher has gone off the deep end. I'm not saying that I believe this. I just want to prepare us for whatever this report is. I want us to have already thought through it. Okay, so in the event that there are really intelligent life forces that originated not on Earth, and they have come to Earth, okay, that would mean that they have come a very long way. Uh, that would mean that they have technology far beyond us and um we can pretty much we pretty much know what's in our milky way galaxy we've been able to explore that and we use our tech to see what's there so this would be really significant there they would be really highly intelligent and they had come a long way and built aircraft that is way beyond what we have okay so for that case it would maybe be disturbing but Let's just say that it, it is exactly that. What would that mean for our faith? Okay. What it wouldn't take away is that we really exist here. Jesus really did come to the earth. Jesus really did die. He really did rise again. And we really are made in the image of God. OK, so some questions that I would have if there were intelligent life elsewhere is, were they made in the image of God or are they more along the lines of intelligent animals that God created elsewhere? So we know that we, mankind, uh, men and women, are made specifically in the image of God and we're different than animals. You know, you have some really impressive dolphins and uh, chimpanzees and uh, octopus, you know, you'll see some animals out there, some parrots that'll talk to you. You can be really impressed by animals out there, but um, we're different. And the Bible says we're different. And God says we're different. And he sent a savior, not for the animals, not for the angels, even. He sent a savior for us, for you, for me. And so we're unique and we have a special love of God that we have a special salvation narrative that not even the angels have. So I would want to know if there were 
alien life forms, UFOs, I would want to know, are they just really advanced, but not made in the image of God? Because that wouldn't then change much for me. Um, now, if there were other life forms out there that were made in the image of God, I would start asking questions like, well, did they get a savior too? Was Jesus the savior of their world? Did they get their own Jesus? You know, so obviously I don't believe any of that's true, but that's what, that's where my mind would go in that scenario. Um, you know, what, what role does Christ have for them? Is there any role for that for them? So that's something that I would probably think through because we know from reading our verses earlier that nothing exists apart from his design and plan. I think we have to think about, you know, what what would be the end game? You know, if we were being visited by UFOs from far away, uh, would it be a hostile scenario? Um, I think, I mean, possibly it's it's possible. So my only concern is that we do we do know the end of the book. We know how our story is going to wrap. We know that the Bible has promised us Jesus Christ will return and that he will usher in an end to all things here. He will finish out uh, the earth. He will combine heaven and earth and he will renew it and he will uh, those he will execute judgment on the living and the dead and uh, there will be a, a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem, and there will be a lake of fire and um, we'll kind of go our separate ways. Those who are in Christ will be with him. Those who are not in Christ will not be. And so that's sort of, we, we know what to sort of expect is the ending. So um, ultimately uh, that's going to end that way. So even if there were other life forms, it wouldn't necessarily change that. It wouldn't uh, play into that ability. Now, if, if, if mankind was all wiped out, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> by an alien life force, then yeah, that would be, that would, we, we would cross that bridge when we got there, but uh, that would maybe be uh, affecting our biblical worldview. But even if there were intelligent life forms, I don't know that that would necessarily change much for us. I know that sounds crazy because it, it would it would be hard to take, but uh, I, I don't see that that would change the return of Christ coming to make all things new. It wouldn't change anything about our salvation. It wouldn't change the existence of God that God created everything. Um, so I, you know, I would not get too disturbed by this, even if some of those worst case scenarios came out. Now, let me just say as we kind of conclude this time, I don't believe that this is going to return any report of intelligent alien extraterrestrial life. I really don't. I think that there's going to be some explanation uh, or it's, it's going to be, you know, more unknowns for a long time. And I, I don't believe that for, for there to be life somewhere far away and to come here, uh, it would be a, a massive demonstration of intelligence to be able to do that. I mean, you think about where we are and what it would take for us to visit someone galaxies over, um, the chances of that happening and the, and that the chances of God putting life elsewhere and not telling us about it, um, uh, are just not very high. It's, it's very unlikely that this is going to turn into a scenario where we really have to be thinking about aliens existing. Okay, so I just want to calm your mind on that, that I, I really don't think that's the case. I don't, in my heart of hearts, believe that there is intelligent life outside of Earth, other than maybe you'll find a, a bacteria cell or something somewhere under the, on Mars or something in the water under, you know, 50 feet deep. But realistically, I do not think this is going to become a huge deal. Um, there may be some more unknowns that come up and we'll see this video and it'll always be shaky video and it'll be this and that kind of grainy video that we, you know, you don't really see the context of it. I don't think we're going to see much else beyond that. And I don't believe that it's realistic that there is life outside of what we know. But if it does, that really doesn't ultimately change much for us. 
so I just wanted to kind of get ahead of that, maybe calm some of your fears, maybe maybe engage some thinking that you haven't engaged before. That report is going to come out in June. So maybe we'll revisit this and laugh at it at, it <laughs> at that time. Maybe it'll be nothing. Maybe it'll be something. But um, in the end, I still trust God is the maker of everything. And I trust that Jesus did exactly what the Bible says he did. And uh, nothing really would change that. So I want to uh, encourage you today with that in light of this uh, report that's going to be coming out soon and probably some increased press that comes with it. So this has been Off Script Episode 5. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Keep listening. The best way you can... uh, spread this podcast around is by word of mouth and and sharing this link with others. Uh, I really don't like to get into the uh, constant self-promotion thing. And uh, uh, I, I, it's much better if you just tell people about it and you, and you introduce this to new audiences. So hope you guys have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time when we get back in here and do another off script.